Hello everybody, here we are at our second episode about creating paths with FreeCAD. In this episode we are going to talk about profiling. As you can see I've already created a weirdly shaped body. I've created also the job for it. This weird shape is not useless because I want to show you several uh, scenarios in which you can use the profile tool and how to use it and there are a few hacks that I'm going to show you today. Let's start by cutting the profile of our whole piece. So with our job selected, I just click on the profile button, this dialog pops up, I click on apply and you, as you can see I already have the path for my profile. What I don't like about it is that it starts in the highest point of my body. Why is that? Because it considers I cut all of this from one solid block. Well, I usually don't, especially when I'm working with wood. I take a board, I glue another board on top of it and the top board of course is slightly larger than what I need, but not as big as the bottom one. So what I wanted to do, I want to make the profile start only from this height. So I select the face, go to depth. On the right of the start depth you can see a small arrow. I click on it and the start depth modified accordingly. If I click apply you can see that my profiling is where it should be. Of course it starts lower than the face because there is an offset equal to the step down set here. I can change the step down. Let's say I want a third of the tool diameter and I click on apply again and as you can see it updates accordingly. I have several passes with a lower step down for each pass. If I click OK it closes the dialog and I have my operation here. What I want to check is the direction. If you hover any of those lines there's an arrow that is pointing to the direction of the cutter head movement. You can see that for my operation this movement is clockwise. This means it's going to be a climb cut. If I double click the profile again, uh, I have an option to change the direction clockwise or counterclockwise. If I change it to counterclockwise and hover the CNC movement lines again, you can see there's an arrow pointing the other way. It's going to make a conventional cut. I'll explain the difference between conventional cut and climb cut in another episode, which is going to be about CNC actually, not about free cut, because it's connected actually to how a cut is made and not to the free cut path generating anyway. Okay, so let's say now I want to profile this face. I can select it, click on the profile button and then apply. And of course it won't be able to do anything because this face is perpendicular to the cutter head. What I actually need to select is the bottom line. But now as you can see nothing happens to. I can see a profile error here which actually is not a profile error but rather a profile warning. Check edge selection and final depth requirements for profiling open edges. Well I check the final depth and everything seems okay. Nothing happens. I can select this again and it still nothing happens. What I've learned I can do. It's not the ideal solution, depending on the application it may lead to undesired results. But I've learned if I insert here instead of 20 millimeters, I manually write 20.01, it magically appears. Well, sometimes I've encountered situations where 0.01 doesn't work. In that case, all you have to do is put here 02. And that is the most failproof solution, it always works. Don't know exactly why, sometimes 01 doesn't work, but 02 always works. Now I have a second profile operation for this part of my top cube. Another way I can do this is by selecting the top line of this shape. Click on the profile button and nothing happens again because now the final depth is the depth of this line which is 50. I can select the bottom face, press the arrow next to final depth and now it works. Don't ask me why selecting the top line works and selecting the bottom line doesn't work. I'm not sure why and I don't really need to understand it. I just need to know that if I select the bottom line I can use the 0.01 or 0.02 hack. Let's delete this profile. 
because I don't want to make a partial operation for this face. Let's take our first profile for the one for the bottom and I'll double click it to open it. And let's take all the tabs one by one and explain you what everything is. Of course, the base geometry is the geometry that defines where I want uh, the cut to be made. If nothing is entered here, as you can see, it will default to the outside of my entire body. I can also select the face, the horizontal face. I can edit here, click on apply and you can see my profile is still there but there's a small issue because being the top face this will uh, also dictate the final depth so i want to set it to the bottom I just select the bottom line click on the arrow next to final depth apply and everything is back as it should i also can select lines as you've seen previously i select all these lines holding the control key pressed. I select all the lines and click on add. This also results in the same operation with the same height problem which I have to manually adjust. So I select the bottom line, click on the arrow next to final depth and everything is back again for this scenario also. Here on depth you can see I have my start depth, my final depth and the step down. The step down is defined usually by a formula, but I can also enter, let's say, 0.7 millimeters. And now I have a lot, a lot of passes. In the height tab, there is safe height and clearance height, is the height at which the cutter head will move when it doesn't cut. I usually don't modify them from here, I'll make a separate episode about how to modify heights, so they apply to all my operations in one job. I like to do it that way because a job represents a collection of operations for one body so usually that body remains clamped to the table for all the operations so probably I have to adjust uh, all the safe heights and clearance heights the same way. On the operation tab I can select the tool, I only have one tool on my job so I can change that. Coolant mode, for non, flood or mist. I don't have a coolant, so I'll use none always. On the cut side, there's outside and inside. If I change it to inside, you can see it does some pretty weird thing for this particular case. But sometimes it's very useful to change it. If I have, uh, let's say, a hole like this one, you will see that on the outside it actually goes through the body. And so I have to select inside so it cuts as it should. Okay, now we are back to outside for our operation. The direction, it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Clockwise means climb cutting, counterclockwise means conventional cutting. Extra offset is useful when I want to actually leave some space here. And what do I use it for? Well, let me give you an example. I want to make this cut and most probably for each layer there will be some small line visible on the outside. I don't want that. So for the main operation, let me change the depth again to 2 millimeters to have less lines here. Okay, so for the operation, for the first operation, I want this to cut 0.2 millimeters farther away from the body. I change it to 0.2 click on apply, you can see it moved slightly farther away from the body. After I've done this, I click on my operation, go to path, path modification, copy the operation in the job, and you can see I have an identical operation here. I just want one single pass that will clear all the material so it leaves the smooth finish. I go to the extra offset, change it to zero again, And you can see it moves slightly to the inside, but I don't want several passes like the first operation. So what I do, I go to the depth, select the bottom, click on the start depth, apply, and now I only have one pass that will be slightly closer to my workpiece. I like to use this combination because it always leaves a great finish for no matter what material I'm processing, even if it is a little bit more time consuming in the programming part. Okay, so we are back with our weirdly shaped body. 
and let's just uh, make all the operations to profile this whole piece first of all i click on the profile just to make the outside on a, clicking on apply and i can see it starts from top i don't want that i want to start from this face i select it go to depth click on the arrow next to start depth and then click on apply everything is fine but i don't like the step down i want it to be a third of the tool diameter so i update the formula click on apply again everything is fine it's going to be by default as i told you it's going to be a climb cut climb cut gives a rougher surface compared to conventional cut so i'm going to change the direction to counterclockwise to have a conventional cut for this operation click on apply now i'm going to select the profile and make sure the cut direction is okay you can see the arrow next i want to make this part over here the easiest way is to select the face click on profile again click on apply to see what happens well it actually goes on the inside as you can see and it's not what i wanted to do so i go to cut side change it to outside check again by clicking apply and i want it to go all the way to this face so i go to depth select the face click on the arrow next to final depth this time i also change the step down to a third of the tool diameter update the formula click ok click apply now i have this profile also what i don't have yet is the profile for this hole so i'm going to select the face click on profile again click on apply make sure it does what it should and i have to be careful to the step down so i go to depth update the tool diameter formula uh, just a third of total diameter now you can see there are three lines click ok now i have all my three profiles so my piece should end up just like this well you can imagine it's kind of difficult to obtain a piece like this without holding it down somehow so what i want to do now is add some holding points one on each side of the bottom or the larger part on the bottom so i select the first profile go to path path dress up and tag you can see it automatically created four holding points one on each side if i don't like how they are placed i can select each of them from here you see they are highlighted let's say i want to delete the third one i select it click on delete click on apply again so the path view updates and if i want to add one i click on add then i'll just put my mouse where i want the tag to be click on save i don't know why why there is a different one but let's just delete it click on apply again and i have my tag here again i can alter its shape by changing the angle uh, a bigger value for angle gives a flatter surface here i can also change the height of the tags and of course the width so i have my holding points i like to make them as low as possible but to make sure the piece won't move and afterwards i cut them using the bend saw and flatten everything using a copying bit with a handheld router so that's the basics of the profiling for this weirdly shaped body in the next episode we'll talk about flattening these faces we'll cover two scenarios where i already have the rough shape of the body and the second scenario where i just use a big block and i want to cut everything up so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time also don't forget to press the subscribe button if you haven't done it already